So this is a video that's going to go through mainly type 1 and type 2 error, um, but specifically using the Poisson distribution. So I've got an example here. A group of uh, Algebra 2 students are going to get together to study for a final exam, and the number of questions they solve per hour can be modeled by a Poisson distribution. So one of our students, Sophia, claims that the average number of questions the group solves per hour is 10, but another student, Rodrigo, disagrees and thinks it's less than 10. So uh, Rodrigo decides to set up a test. He's going to record the number of questions the group solves in one hour. And if it's less than eight, he's going to reject Sophia's claim. So usually questions like this ask you to set up the null and alternative, which uh, come from this, uh, this middle section. So the null is that the, the mean or the average is 10. And the alternative is, is this other student thinking it's less than 10. So then uh, if we want to find the probability of a type 1 error in this situation, you have to know, you have to remember that a type 1 error is when you reject the null hypothesis, but it is true. And so the actual calculation you're going to have to do is using this third little paragraph, where it says if it's less than 8, he's going to reject Sophia's claim. So the probability that x is less than 8 is actually the same thing as the probability that x is less than or equal to 7. But we're given that the null hypothesis is true. So given that mu is equal to 10, or the average is equal to 10. And so those are the numbers you type into your Poisson CDF, 10 and 7, and then that gives you the probability of that type 1. Error. So all you got to do on the GDC is go second VARs, which is the distributions, and then Poisson is quite a ways down, so I just hit the up button. And there's Poisson CDF, and mu is the average, so that was, um, we're assuming that the average is 10, we're assuming that the null hypothesis is true, and the x value, it was 7 because... Uh, if it was less than 8, he would reject the claim. So we don't want to type in 8 because that would include 8. So we type in 7, and then that's going to give us the probability of a type 1 error. So we'd say 0 0.220. Okay, and then type 2 error. Um, so we're given that the average number of questions the group solves is actually found to be 8.4. So it wasn't 10. Uh, Sophia was uh, actually, Rodrigo was right that the mean was less than 10. And um, so if we want to find the probability of a type 2 error, this is when you accept the null hypothesis, but it's false. So in this case, we are assuming it's false, or it's like we're given that it's false. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to 10, which would be um, situations when the null hypothesis is false, is the same thing as 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 9, because we have to do it that way because our calculator cannot um, do probabilities that are greater than some number. They only do less than. So like if we type in 10, it's going to do the probability of 10, 9, 8, all the way down to 0. It won't do above 10. So we have to flip it around and do 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 9, and we're given that mu is 8.4. So that's going to go into our Poisson CDF, and then that value of 9 is the other one we want. And so that's very easy to calculate. Uh, the hard thing is figuring out what you're supposed to type in. So again, Poisson CDF, because it's a, a range of values, so our average is told to be 8.4, and then the x value is that 9. Yeah, probably the x is less than or equal to 9. And so we just have to remember to do 1 minus this to get the type 2 error. So 1 minus answer, 0.334 would be the type 2 error.